to upload the dip switch box first download our instructions and on the instructions you'll find the link to download the firmware uploader it'll look like this and then in here you're going to be downloading these two files here okay and then go look for these two files here okay they are both zipped so you want to unzip them so in our case, we didn't have the program to unzip the RAR file. So we went ahead and install the RARzilla. So now that we can, so go ahead and right click on these and we're gonna extract. All right, and we're gonna extract the other one too. So we're basically unzipping it. Okay, we went ahead and unzip both. So let's start off with the driver. So we'll double click on the driver and depending on which Windows version you have, if you have the 64-bit, you're going to select the 64-bit. You're going to double click on this GD32 DFU driver. You're going to select yes, install. All right, and this will install the driver needed. Okay, after you do that, you're going to go back to the other folder that you unzipped, which is going to be the DFU tool. Double click on it, select, and then you're going to double click on this file to open. So once this opens, it's, you're going to get a prompt to ask if you want to update your product. Um, say no. And you're going to select the verify after download. And then you are going to download the firmware files. It could be two for Lexus or one for Toyota using the download link that was provided with the instructions. So we're going to go ahead and download these. Save. Okay, and then once um, we have these two files, it might actually be zipped, you might have to unzip it, but uh, we went ahead and just download it directly. So we're gonna start off with the main. So we're gonna go here, and then we're gonna open, and we're gonna look for those files that we just downloaded, so the main. Okay, and once you grab the main one, um, go ahead and grab your dip switch box, and on your dip switch box, you'll find these two mini USB plug-ins. So go ahead and select the correct one. You're going to plug it in. And then you're going to select OK to load the file in. And it's plugged in. Press OK. You'll see this prompt go. You'll see it go again. Downloading file. And then you will see it verifying the file. OK. And that's for the main. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same for the sub. So we got the sub here. Okay, verify it's a sub file. And then go ahead and plug it into the sub, which is gonna be towards the inside of the box. Okay, verify after download and then press okay. This one's gonna be much faster. All right, and you can go ahead and disconnect your mini USB from your computer and that completes the update of your dip switch box. So if you're updating a Toyota, interface note that you will only have main you will not have sub so you only have one connector one mini usb connector on the back side of dip switch not two and it's only going to be one file which is main only the lexus has two which is sub and main first you want to go ahead and download the folder that we're going to send to you or you're going to download and once you download it you are going to unzip it and once you unzip it you'll see two files like this gemini pack and isp boot these are both bin files it's important that we take both of these files and put it into a freshly formatted usb drive once you have that prepared we have our usb thumb drive connected to our computer so you go to your usb thumb drive you're going to right click it Gonna format this and do a quick format at FAT32, okay? All right, so let's do that. All right, format is complete. And then we are gonna take these two files, we're gonna right click and we're gonna copy them into the new USB drive uh, to the root folder. Root folder means there's no folders. Okay, once you do this, you're going to right click and you are going to eject. All right, so now we can safely remove it from the computer. All right guys, so we're in the vehicle. We got our USB stick with our new firmware inside to upgrade this. And now you need to access 
your CarPlay module. Okay, it's, it might not look like this. This is the old one with the old case. The newer one's plastic, but uh, basically the function is the same. So you're going to go to your box and you're going to locate your USB um, plug. And right next to the USB plug is your microphone. And right next to the microphone, you'll find two pinhole switches. Okay, one of them is going to be labeled UPG or upgrade button. That's the one that's closest to the microphone button. Go ahead and locate that and then grab your USB stick and we're going to connect it to our USB plug. That is connected to our CarPlay module. Okay, so we're going to connect it over here like so. Um, you could connect it directly to the box or you could connect it to the extension cable which is connected to the box. Same thing. Okay, and then go ahead and turn on your CarPlay screen. So it's probably not going to look like this. We already upgraded our system. We're just showing you how to do it. So next. What we're going to do is, this is the upgrade UPG button, use a ballpoint pen like this and you can gently push it in. And if you push it, you'll feel, you'll feel it click, clicking in, okay? So once you get a feel of that, go ahead and turn off your car. All right. And then we are going to turn on the car while pressing this. So go ahead and press it. Don't, you don't have to press it that hard. Just, um, just, you feel that click. Keep it in there and then while you're pushing it in, you're gonna turn on the car. And then count to three. One, two, three. And you're gonna let go, okay? If you keep the button pressed for too long, you're gonna see red crosses on the screen. That's, that's something you don't want. And go ahead and turn on your CarPlay and you'll find this screen here that says updating. Some issues that you might encounter, if the update fails, you might need to use another USB thumb drive. Some thumb drives, this doesn't work for some reason. So try another one or make sure you unzip the file and include both of the files into the root folder. So we saw a mistake where a customer would just put the whole zipped folder inside this USB. That will not work. Or we also had a customer who put the whole folder that was unzipped into this USB. That also doesn't work. You have to just take those two files that are in the folder after you unzip it and put it into the root folder of this new USB drive, USB thumb drive, root folder, meaning there's no folder. It's just straight onto the directory, and that's how you need to do it. So once you have completed the update procedures, you'll see a screen that says burn success. Welcome, and then now you can go ahead and turn off your car, and then turn it back on again. And next, I'm gonna show you how to update the firmware after you upgrade it. So say that you already upgrade to this new system and there's a new firmware update for something and you want to update, right? So you want to first go into your CarPlay screen like so, okay? And then go to settings. And then once you're in settings, you're going to go to system and you're going to go to firmware update, system update. And then you're going to press that arrow button. That will also update it and this will only work once you upgrade it to the new system if you still have the older system you cannot go through this step unfortunately you have to press the upg button on the box itself so unfortunately if you had it installed by a shop you do have to go back to the shop and ask him to do that for you um, if the current system is working out for you then there's no need to upgrade it to the new system okay Okay, so we got that done and that's updated. And let me go over some of the new features of this new update or this new, new upgrade. So let's go to our settings. And these are some of the new functions and options that we added. So if you go to your system, you could change it to left-hand drive or right-hand drive. If you turn this on, everything's gonna flip to the other side. So if you're a right-hand drive car, you're in Australia or you're in like UK, then you'll want to turn this on. And then there's use cars BT channel. So this is going to be turned on from default. And this is the new update. So all the audio and all the turn by turn directions, Siri, text message, everything is going to be pushed to the cars Bluetooth channel. So before you needed to be in auxiliary. So, you know, on your audio source, you had to select auxiliary and then use CarPlay. But now, we are pushing all the music through Bluetooth audio. 
And the benefit of this is that auxiliary sound quality could be a bit different than the factory Bluetooth audio just because the EQ on our device is set up differently to make it work for most of the vehicles. So it could sound a little bit different. But now that we're pushing all the audio through the car's Bluetooth, you will be able to utilize the audio performance and quality that you're used to hearing. Okay, so that is the benefit. And on top of that, another benefit is for phone calls, you don't have to worry about if it got routed correctly to the car's Bluetooth or to the CarPlay Bluetooth. Now everything's gonna go to the car's Bluetooth. So that's that, it's gonna be turned on. Go ahead and keep it on. And firmware update, we already went up to that. And system version, if you just wanna check what version it is, you could check over here. And we also have the factory reset button as well. And you could go back to return and you could, and we have the smartphone, smartphone list. This just tells you which um, smartphones you have. If you have just CarPlay, then you could just keep that on. You could turn off the Android Auto, vice versa. If you have two systems, you could keep both of them on. Um, if you want to just keep both on just for the heck of it, you could keep both on. But it's just a matter of if it shows the icon or not at the home screen. And then under resolution, so this is default 800 by 480, and this is what works for the smaller screens. Um, if you have the larger screens, like the 12.3 or the 10.3 inch, you are going to want to select a different option, which is this one here, 1280 by 480 CP, and then AA is 1280 by 720. Go ahead and select it, and then once you select it, press the back return, which will save your setting. And for the change to take effect, you do have to turn off your car and turn it back on for the resolution to change. All right, so I'm gonna put it back to default, which is this, okay. Let's go back um, some steps. There's also a Bluetooth setting, whether you want to auto connect or not once the car turns on. Default is yes, um, we'll go ahead and keep that on. And once you pair some phones on it, it will show up down here. Right now there's no, no phones that are paired because we just did the firmware update, but once you pair it, It'll show up here and you can also delete your old phones that you don't want. And then if you go to audio here, this is if you use the auxiliary for CarPlay or Android Auto, then this is relevant. If you're gonna be using the Bluetooth, then that will not be relevant. All right, so let me go ahead and show you some of the functions and how everything will work with this new device. Here, let's go ahead and forget this car. We're gonna re refresh our connection because we just changed the firmware on this system. So we're gonna do our first connection. We'll go to settings. We're gonna go to general CarPlay. Go ahead and select it. Okay, we're gonna pair. We're gonna allow. And then there's another prompt that comes up. We're gonna allow that as well. Okay, right here. Allow MV17W to check for CarPlay apps allow. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now that it's connected, uh, when you turn off your car and turn it back on, it will reconnect by itself when you turn on the car. Um, and this time, the new after this new upgrade, it only takes about six seconds for it to connect. So the phone is gonna connect to the CarPlay device faster than it connects to the car's Bluetooth. So if you're in the middle of playing music, you might hear the music come out of the phone speakers until the phone connects to the car's Bluetooth. So just keep that in mind. And also, when you connect your phone to the car's Bluetooth, only use this menu item. So you're only going to use General CarPlay and MV17. You will never go directly to the Bluetooth setting or the Wi-Fi setting. So if I go to a Bluetooth setting, it's not going to show that this device is connected to the MV17W, okay? And that may confuse a lot of you guys. So why well, isn't it connected? because the type of connection that the wireless CarPlay makes a little bit different. So it doesn't fully utilize the typical type of Bluetooth. Um, it's a different type of wireless connection, so it won't show here. And at the same time, if you go to your Wi-Fi, it also won't show here as well. So don't um, mess with the connections on those two. Instead, always only connect from general CarPlay and this menu here. And if you want to disconnect, you can press it, disconnect, press it again turn it on as well. And if you want to customize the order in, of the icons, you can go to customize. You can drag these icons up and down to change the order. You could delete the ones that you don't use. All right, and then 
One more thing that I want to mention is you have to make sure your phone is connected to the car's Bluetooth. So if you go to your Bluetooth, this car's a Lexus GX, it is, shows that it is connected. And if you don't have it connected to the car's Bluetooth, you can do so by going to your factory infotainment system, go to setup, go to Bluetooth, and then you can go ahead and add. Okay, I'm, I'm going to cancel this, but you could go ahead and add and go through the procedures to connect your phone to the car's Bluetooth. And the reason why it's important that you connect the phone to the car's Bluetooth is because we are going to be pushing all the audio through the car's Bluetooth instead of going through the car's auxiliary. So let me go back to this setting here. Okay, so everything is already set up like so. And once everything's set up, it's going to launch or you can press the icon to, to turn on. So before we go further, let me go ahead and disconnect this phone for a moment. So I'll go here to the CarPlay and we're going to disconnect. And once you're disconnected, you can still press on these icons. And it'll give you directions on how to connect wireless to your phone or wireless. So wireless and wire. It's going to give you directions. And if you click on CarPlay over here as well. And then say that you don't want to use the wireless, then you can also connect wired. Just by connecting your phone to it, they are wired, okay? And then here it is, CarPlay once again. And then you disconnect it and it'll go back to the screen. Very, very simple. All right, so let me go ahead and turn on my wireless CarPlay. Okay, there it is. Very, very fast. One thing we wanna do is adjust the Siri voice volume level on this CarPlay system. How you do that is go to your settings and go to sound and haptics and make sure this is turned on, change with buttons, okay? And once this is turned on, you are going to summon Siri um, by pressing the bottom left corner of the screen here, or if you have a car with a joystick or a touch screen, you're gonna long press the menu button to summon Siri. Okay, let's go check the Siri voice. What's the weather, Siri? It's currently clear. And okay, the volume level is okay, but we want to also check what the volume level of Siri is compared to the music. What's the weather? It's currently clear. Okay, and it's actually not bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it alone. But if you need to adjust it, how you do it is go to this menu, sound and haptics, turn on, change with button. You're gonna summon Siri from your phone. And then from here, you could adjust the volume on your phone. So it'll tell you that is the that is how loud your Siri will be okay and there's two ways of summoning Siri so one is pressing and holding here um, giving your command or you can also say hey Siri what is the weather temperatures are heading down from okay. 85 there's also to that Siri degrees. too when you call out hey Siri and you give the commands the, the volume level might differ from summoning the Siri here. That's because if you use your voice to summon Siri, it's actually going through the phone. And when it goes through the phone, the system will take it as if you're on a phone call. So the volume level could vary. If you want to adjust that Siri volume, you can do so by turning the volume knob while Siri is talking. So I'm going to show you a different screen here just so you understand it better. Oh, this factor screen. Hey Siri, what's the weather? currently clear and 86 degrees. So with this, you could adjust the volume. This is the, basically a call volume, which will be the same volume as your Siri. So that's one way. And second way is changing the volume on, on this screen over here. All right, so once you have the Siri's volume level to your desired level, you are good to go. And all the factory controls works and operates normally. So let me just show it to you. I'm gonna lock my phone. So we've got music playing here. Okay, so we have the track up, track down. The volume controls work up and down. It's just, you just don't see the change on the screen. And you can also pick up and hang up the phone calls. So let's go ahead and make a phone call. And all the phone calls will always route to the car's Bluetooth. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Okay. And you can also hang up here like that. And if I need to make a phone call, same thing. I can make a phone call. And so if other person picks up, it's going to be going through the car's Bluetooth. 
and then you could hang up, hang up. And if you want to use the wired CarPlay instead of wireless, all the functions that I just went through is going to be the same. And I'll give you one scenario. For any reason, if your phone is not connected to the car's Bluetooth, the songs are going to come out of your phone speakers and not the car's sound system. So make sure the phone is connected to the car's Bluetooth. Okay, one other thing I want to show you is just how fast the phone connects to the wireless CarPlay. So let's go ahead and turn off the car. Okay, we're going to turn it on. All right. And while the factory infotainment system is still loading, I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold the nav button, show you, and it's connected already. It's connected before it even has a chance to fully load the factory system. So it's super, super fast. Another function I wanna show you is you can now actually connect your phone to the car's USB while it's connected to the CarPlay wirelessly and get all the sounds routed to the factory USB. So let me give you an example here. So right now, the uh, phone is connected to the CarPlay wirelessly and all the music and all the sound is going to the car's Bluetooth. Um, but say that you wanna listen to a uh, higher quality music by connecting your phone directly to the car's USB. So we're gonna go back to our nav. Okay, I'll go to audio. We're gonna change the source to iPod, but before we could change the source to iPod, we need to connect our phone to the car's USB. And just remember that the phone needs to be connected to the CarPlay system wirelessly, okay, still. So we're connected here, okay, phone does not have to be unlocked, so phone's unlocked. We pick the iPhone, it's the USB source, okay, and then press and hold nav. There it is, we have CarPlay, music and sounds all going to the car's USB. All right, and if you don't wanna use the factory USB, you can unplug it, song will stop, but you just need to change your audio source back to Bluetooth. Okay, and it's back to how it was before. All right, so now that I showed you how the, the CarPlay side works, let me show you how the Android side will work. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this phone. Uh, to do this, you just have to, once again, go to your settings, go to general, go to CarPlay, and then select our, this CarPlay device, we're gonna turn it off. Okay, and then we're gonna go to our Android phone. And the Android phone, we are going to make sure both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is tur turned on. Okay, and then once the Bluetooth turns on, let's connect to this CarPlay device through Bluetooth. Okay, I found it, let's try to connect it. Okay, there is our Android Auto. Before we go further, let's make sure the phone is connected to the car's Bluetooth as well. So, how to go to our audio, um, go to our setup, and then go to Bluetooth, and then that is my phone. So we're gonna go ahead and connect the car's Bluetooth to this Galaxy S9 Plus. All right, terrific. We are connected. Now we're gonna go back to our Android Auto screen. All the functions will work the same. Okay, you got the track up, track down. And if you wanna summon Google Assistant, press and hold. What's the weather? Right now in La Mirada, it's 85 degrees. Okay, and we can also make phone calls from here. And all the calls are being routed to the car's Bluetooth. And all the functions of your Android Auto will work normally as well. And if you want to switch over the phone, you just have to turn off your Bluetooth and then turn on the CarPlay on your iPhone to switch it over. All right, guys, well, that concludes our instructions and demonstrations of showing you how to upgrade the system. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or you can email us at info at bsonicusa.com. Once again, guys, thank you very much for watching and subscribing and liking our video. Because of you guys, we can continuously improve our products and strive to be better every single day. Thank you very much, and I'll see you guys on the future videos.